I mean, this they're they're, they're creating this whole hysteria, and 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 they're you know obviously they're trying to get the police on. on well, the that's even bigger news than that. The, then they're going to have anonymous. I, I mean, look, look, this is so important. It's in my film, The Takeover. The, the, the government on record with foundations hired about 100 anarchists, flew them in by aircraft, and allowed them to demolish everything, and the cops were told to stand down. This was in the local newspapers. And then two days after that, the media is like, why don't you do something? And so they attacked the peaceful crowds, including men, women, and children. I mean, they play police like you're leading a two-year-old off the side of a cliff. I mean, cops, you got to be smarter than this, where they sit there and they tell them, Anonymous is going to attack, so you don't visit sites. That's saying we don't trust you. You're bad. No, we don't want you to know. I mean, cops have got to be smarter than that, the, 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 that the system is afraid of police waking up. I mean, does your friend that you were hunting with, does he buy this? You know, Alex, I tried to talk to him and tried to educate him. It's, you know, it's, it's somebody who's never really seen the other side of this or really can't see through the matrix and it, you know it was very difficult I, so i don't know I and so he thinks he thinks he better not visit sites or the government will be in his computer without a warrant and he thinks having his fourth amendment violated is a good thing well I, on his computer i brought up your website and showed him the ndaa so he's on, he's probably on the list already <laughs> We're all on. Listen, they can't get all of us unless we get scared and give in to them. Was there anything else he added that you want to point out? No, no, but I just wanted to say I'm going to work the early voting for Ron Paul. Guys, get out there and uh, volunteer at local campaign. Well Ron said, Paul, well guys. said. You know, I try to cover stuff in a simple way sometimes, and I tend to not do it. The point is... Anytime something's anonymous and people are wearing masks, that's perfect for government infiltration. Or anytime there's no leadership of something. And, and anytime the ideas of an organization aren't openly available, that's where you find globalist infiltration. If it's some militia wants to meet with you in camo, but uh, they won't tell you their names, it's feds, folks. If uh, people are saying something's anonymous. It's the feds looking for morons that they can set up. Looking for people. I mean, I can't tell you how many cases I've seen, even the Washington Post and others have admitted this goes on, where the government goes and gets ex-prisoners who were forced to, you know, join Islam or whatever in prison or, or uh, you know, be gang raped, basically, because if you're not part of one of the gangs, uh, well, you know what happens to you. And uh, normally, it's always the same story, single-parent family, 78 IQ, mildly retarded, uh, you know, poor person, uh, you know, serious handicaps, whatever the case is, mental disabilities. And you hear on the news, they were planning to wage war against America. And it's just a complete cutout. And I, I couldn't imagine being a police officer and being told, watch what websites you go to, because the government's watching you. That's the tyranny right there. I mean, I remember 10 years ago, oh, they'll never secretly arrest citizens. Now they're on the news going, we will kill you. We won't just arrest you, we'll kill you without a warrant. They're overthrowing all of the checks and balances. For a reason. Now, that's another big question I should throw out to listeners. Why do you think they're overthrowing the Bill of Rights and Constitution right now? And if we don't need it, if it's such a bad thing, why did we have it before? Well, the answer is they're getting ready to bring us into a full depression and rob everybody blind. The, the, the depression is the plan. The people running the society want the depression to consolidate control. They're not screwing things up. They're not incompetent idiots. They know what they're doing. It's all public. They're consolidating control. If you don't go along with their program... And if they don't think they can carry out the next phase of this, they'll back off and wait for us to go back to sleep. But now they figured out that's not going to happen, so they're accelerating it. It looks like even though we're waking up, and that's why the big confrontation is on. This is an incredible time to be alive right now. And every person you wake up is key. They're, they're telling cops don't visit alternative websites because they're scared they're going to wake up. They're scared they're going to... Go to Infowars.com where we collate 
the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, the El Paso Times, and then our article from eight months before, like, look, we told you the government's shipping in narcotics and laundering hundreds of billions. Here's our report, exactly the same group. Now here they are, eight months later, forced to report what we told you. They're afraid of the incredible credibility. They're afraid of the fact that I know they're criminals at the top, that you know, and that they're going to know. Nick in uh, Brooklyn, you're on the air. Welcome. Alejandro Revere. How are you, my friend? Hey, I like that. Alejandro Revere. Good, my friend. <laughs> I've been practicing that for quite a while. Alex, it's great to talk to you. I just want to tell you how thankful and grateful, and I'm sure I speak for a whole lot of people, particularly in Brooklyn and Manhattan, New York, wherever, that thank you for all the work that you're doing uh, and uh, for getting this information out there. Alex, I wanted to touch on a point. First of all, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that uh, I love Ron Paul. I absolutely love the man. And the establishment media is absolutely ignoring him. He, they, they are working overtime. They are running around like insane piranhas on methamphetamine and PCP attacking him. Absolutely. And they can't, you know, it amazes me because they have nothing that they can grab onto, except some letters that they say he signed and, and or some, some have to do with, you know, these letters and calling him a racist and all that. But yet they ignore the fact, they ignore the fact that his ideas transcend everything that has to do with race or, in, or just every spectrum across the board. Because if we don't have liberty in order to be able to, uh, 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 you know, share our ideas or share whatever it is that we may believe, we don't have that. And that resonates. I, I tell you what, stay there. You're on a roll. I want you to be able to finish because I interrupted you. Uh, exactly. Ron, Ron Paul is completely about who you are, not what color you are or where you came from. I mean, it's a, it, the system that claims they're fighting racism, that's all they obsess on all day, and then they make that people's entire world. Ron Paul is about the end of all of that. Stay there, I'll come right back to you, Nick. We're on the march. The M All right, let's go back to Nick in Brooklyn. Start over, Nick, with your point about uh, Ron Paul. Go ahead. Basically, <clears throat> basically what I'm trying what I'm trying to say is that every every morning I, I, I get up and I go through the rigors of what we we all get, you know, get ready for work, all that stuff. You turn on the TV to find out the weather and of course they roll by what's been happening in the campaigns. And we realize that they have everybody up there, okay? Uh, even the janitor who was cleaning up the uh, where they had the debates, except Ron Paul. And I'm saying to myself, well, wait a minute, you know, here's a candidate who actually has something to say, who doesn't need a teleprompter, who's able to pinpoint the exact problems that this country is facing right at this pivotal moment. And they give him they, 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 they don't show him. They don't speak. You know, they, 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 they have it's like he has it's like he doesn't exist. And I'll tell you what this is. This is a coming of age, though. Because just when you think you know how corrupt the system is and the establishment is, you get slapped in the face with no. It's only when their facade really starts getting exposed that they really show you that it's beyond bias. It is a total arrogance, but more than that, a fear that you'll discover the monopoly that they're running over our society and that they don't want you making decisions and when Ron Paul, the only non-puppet candidate, stands up, it calls their entire bluff. It, 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 he exposes the little man behind the curtain, the Wizard of Oz, the great and powerful Oz, and they cannot allow him to win. So they will cheat, they will steal, uh, they will manipulate, they'll give him 89 seconds, they'll block him out. And when they're forced to talk about him, they'll say he can't win. But and that's why Ron Paul, you know, basically was giddy when he when he came in second place in New Hampshire, was he pointed out he's winning just by exposing what a bunch of crooks they are. The system is really destroying its capital. In fact, I saw a Krauthammer uh, article out of the Chicago Tribune. I was going to mention where he's so angry. Uh, that Ron Paul won't go away. In fact, here it is. Ron Paul is not going to go away. And he goes on to break down, you know, the fact that uh, whether they like it or not, the system is in trouble. Again, they were able to block him out before, but because he understands history and he keeps coming, they don't know what to do. Look, they've got a 9% approval rating. Can you imagine the horrible job of the dinosaur mainstream media 
no matter how expensive their sets, how fancy their outfits, how authoritatively they speak, even if you've got a gold water hose spewing rotten water out, nobody's going to want to drink out of it. They're going to want to drink out of the old rubber hose that's got good clean water coming out of it. And so they've got a gold water hose into a cesspit, into a porta potty with brown sludge shooting out, telling us to take a drink. And their numbers are folding. For a decade, their numbers have been dissipating. But now the last bit of water is going around the toilet bowl there. It's about to make the sound that all the water has been exhausted. And they realize it. And so we're now at that critical juncture. What is this ruling class and all of their minions and all of their court gestures and all their little pimps and sellouts and whores? What are they going to do as their system comes down? Well, they're going to try to bring in tyranny. They're going to try to launch wars. They're going to stage terror attacks. Because it's about tens of trillions of dollars. It's about social control. It's about staying on top. And more importantly, it's about not going to jail. If we actually ever take the government back, the crimes are going to be so legion and so huge that we can't give the globalists an amnesty. We can't say, okay, just go away. They're, they're too well dug in. We're going to have to send the entire super class that's committed crimes to prison. It's about 6,000 of them. And those that were directly involved in killing innocents are going to have to be brought up on murder charges. Capital, premeditated murder charges. And they're going to have to be brought to justice. You have to teach people like this a lesson. I'm not risking my life, my treasure, my name to just sit up here and play patty cake with these people. When we get this country back, these people will be brought to justice. And they know it. They know it. And they understand it. They understand it's for everything. I'm fighting for my life. They're fighting for theirs. Okay? Just like Mussolini and Hitler. They know we're coming for them, and they know we're not going to back off. But it doesn't matter. They are culturally and socially dying now. They have a 9% approval rating. Can you imagine, Nick, the job they've got trying to, you've heard the saying, put perfume on a pig. This isn't putting perfume on a pig. This is putting perfume on a latrine. I mean, you cannot do it. It is There is no going back. There is no way out for them. I've looked at every angle. I mean, look, and by the way, you globalists out there and all your minions and servants, those of you that are mid-level, this new world order is going to be worse for you if it succeeds. It's so horrible. You better hope those of us that have sanity are able to eradicate this cancer that's going into stage four. You better hope oh, you didn't study history. You see, that's the problem. They didn't study history. Go ahead and finish up, Nick. Yes, Al. I just wanted to bring up one more point with you. Um, <clears throat> uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there was a, uh, a gentleman by the name of George Galloway, and you interviewed him back in '07. I was online and I was looking at some of the uh, some of the you know some of the inter some of the stuff that you guys went over. On that interview, but the reason that I bring him up is because um, I was really, really impressed at the fact that uh, Mr. Galloway uh, you know, went to work on uh, the Congress during the last administration and uh, the uh, you know every, the, the whole cover up, the whole you know oil for food program, this, uh, the, that that whole scenario. And so um, he's got somewhat of a little show that he has uh, where he broadcasts directly here into uh, the New York City area. And uh, over from where he's at in England. And, um, you know, I, I called him up because uh, I realized that uh, his position on Ron Paul was uh, somewhat shrewd. And so, you know, I, I call him up and, 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 I, and I say to him, I say to him, uh, 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 Mr. Galloway, listen, um, you know, what, 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 what exactly is it about Ron Paul that you don't like? Uh, and, and, and the fact that uh, you would rather take Obama. Overall, I mean, do you realize that under this administration, the NDAA Act has been passed? I mean, it's a done deal. Are you familiar with the fall of the republic? Are you familiar with uh, the Obama deception? I mean, it lays it out there very, very clearly for us exactly what this administration is about. But he would rather 